Hey everybody, welcome back to Through the Woods 360. Today, we're gonna show you, this is a whole boneless pork loin. Now, I wanted to go to the grocery store and I wanted to buy one because I wanted you to be able to see the price per pound and so you could compare it, but prices are changing all the time anyway. This is actually one from when we um, had a hog butcher to the butcher shop, so I can't tell you a price, but I can tell you a local store this week, had a weekend, had a meat sale and whole boneless pork loin sold vacuum sealed in a bag were two twenty nine a pound. Now they're not quite, they're trimmed up a little bit better than this. So for me to weigh this and tell you how much it would cost, you wouldn't have some of this on there. But around here, people don't waste anything. And rather than take some of this and throw it into your grinding meat for your pork sausage, they just leave it on because some, a lot of people like this. You know, they, it, that dark meat and that fat gives us lean loin, more flavor, helps keep it tender. So they leave this on here because people eat it. <laughs> but anyway, so what I want to show you is there are a lot of cuts and this is still kind of frozen. So we're by here by the fire. So I'm hoping it's going to thaw out pretty fast, but I've got a piece here I want to cut off. And this is, wow. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. I don't believe I'm wrong. This should be the shoulder end here. And we've got just this roast here. And I'm not a meat cutter. So anybody out there that watches this, if you know, I'd appreciate it if you tell me. Because I'm thinking this might be kind of like a pork cali roast, but I believe this is the shoulder end. We're just going to see how that, you always want to work with meat. Working with meat is like working with wood. You want to go with it. You, you, you want to go with how it wants you to work it. Makes things easier. We're just going to cut this off of here. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what I think we're going to do with this. I know what I'd like to do with it. See, this has a little bit of fat on it. Not a whole lot. A little bit of fat. Got a lot of good meat in there and a lot of good dark meat. That dark meat is tender and has a lot of flavor, picks up smoke really well. Yeah, you're thinking like I am. So I'm thinking in a video coming up pretty soon, this baby's going to be on a smoker. Okay, we're going to keep going on this even though she's still frozen in here. So there's a lot of other stuff we can do. I'm going to make this look more like similar to a loin that you buy in the store. This fat and what I was talking about when I said you got to work with the meat. This fat... See, you can just kind of pull that apart there. You know, that's, that's, that's how the meat grows. So, I'm going to do down here where I've got that coming off there real good like that. And then we stop. We're going to hack this off. I'm just going to make one cut. Looks like you got a really nice pork roast this you just is, whacked off of there. This is a beautiful pork roast. Oh, man, that was some potatoes and sauerkraut. Mmm. Awesome. But we'll trim that up a little bit too, but we're just gonna slide her over here for a minute. She's slick because she's frozen. Alrighty. Now, this is what I was talking about with working with it. If you just hold on to it, see, see what I'm doing? All I'm doing is holding with my knife and pulling with my hand. The knife isn't doing anything right now. Now I'm starting to tear this meat, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to slip it underneath there, and I'm going to take her. Come here along here. See how that's coming apart anyway? I'm going to cut that off. You sure you're not a meat cutter? <laughs> I'm not a meat cutter. <laughs> we used to butcher ourselves. so Yes, we did. So I've uh, cut up a lot, of, a lot of loins, a lot of hams, a lot of pork butts for making... Sausage. Mm-hmm. So, so I have cut up a lot of meat. Hope to do that again one of these days. Yeah. So I'm just I'm slipping this in here, and I'm going to cut this off. And this is not trash. That will get put to use. Waste not, want not. This part's still frozen. But, and this is where our good boneless chops are going to come from. You can tell just by looking at that, this is going to be a nice if, boneless chop. Zoom in there. So once this thaws and oh. we can get her, oh, sorry. There you go. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Once this thaws and we can get it cut, you know, straightened out so we can cut it straight, um, we'll do these. And what we're going to do is a couple of them we're going to make for stuffed pork chops. And we're going to show you how to make those probably today. I don't know. Maybe next weekend, whatever. But we're, th these, we're going to cut off some pretty thick chops about like this. And we're going to make a hole in it. Well, they'll, they'll definitely see how to stuff them today. Oh, yeah. Just that, yeah, yeah. You'll definitely today. see how to stuff them today. Not that we're going to cook them today. Anyway, when you buy this boneless loin, and it's on sale for $2.29 a pound, if you look in your, in, in, in your butcher's case or uh, grocery store meat case, whatever you want to say, you will notice that they have butterfly pork chops, boneless pork chops, sometimes stuffed pork chops. Stuffed pork chops, ooh, that's cash, cash cow for the grocery store, for the meat market, because you are paying the price per pound for that meat that has stuffing in it. Now everybody knows you can buy a box of stovetop stuffing for a dollar <laughs> when it's on sale. So you're paying a lot of money when you consider what you're paying per pound for that stuffed chop. That stuffing becomes a lot more expensive and it's a lot easier to do it yourself at home, especially when you buy the loin when it's on sale. And all you need to do is get one of them back lockers and some bags off Amazon. And there are a lot of good bags on Amazon. You don't have to buy no food saver bags or anything like that. And you can save yourself a lot of money not only that, you got meat in the freezer. You don't have to stop at the grocery store, the meat market, butcher shop, whatever you want to call it. And it's right there. You can decide I want it, get it out, thaw it, you're good to go. So off of this end, this end has, you can see that's dark meat. And this dark meat, well, I don't know. When I get a piece cut off, I'll show you. This dark meat, these down here on this end, these are awesome for cutlets. Now, I don't know who don't like a cutlet. I love a cutlet. Ooh, is that is that something like you would use to make? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but a, like a, like a Wiener Schnitzel. Is that a pork cutlet? You can, you yes, you could definitely use a cutlet because you, because you can pound it. It's it, it's got dark meat in it. It's more tender, so it will pound out flat way easier. The the this meat is more tender. The grain isn't as coarse. This you can do it with, but it's harder to pound this out flat than it is this dark meat. And this has dark meat in it. So we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna cut us off. I gotta get one that's a little thick first, just to straighten them out. But he eat just the same. And then we're gonna cut these a little on the thin side because we're gonna pound these out so they're gonna get bigger. So if you start too thick, you can end up with a ginormous one. I wish oh, this man. was a frozen end and this was a thawed end. Wiener schnitzel and red cabbage. Woo. <laughs> yep. We might need to bring Dad's knife sharpener down here. His old knife ain't doing too good right now. So, so there's two. And we'll pound those out. And we're going to do that in a different video and show you how to do that. Because there's only so much time. What do you think? About four of them, Gino? Yeah, that'd be about right. You know? Maybe, maybe we'll make a maybe we'll make a German dinner again. Haven't made anything German really since our roulade. Or, or what we're gonna, or what we can do. What you can also do, you pound these out. You take these and you dredge them in some flour. Then you put them in a little egg wash, and put them in some seasoned flour or fish fry seasoning, Andy's fish breading, whatever you want to do. You can mix up your own, and you take it and you skillet fry it like in a skillet with just a little bit of oil in it about mm. quarter of an inch of oil half an inch whatever and they're pork fritters Ooh, that and they are good absolutely too. excellent you take a bun put some butter on it and toast it get you some mayo and some fresh garden tomato oh man okay i'm glad you cut four of maybe two wiener schnitzel and two of the other <laughs> <laughs> that is good stuff let me tell you that's amazing those pork fritter sandwiches. Oh, wow. I'm cutting two more, Gino. So. Okay. Because I'm sure when we had the fritters. Sounds like two good meals coming up to me. You ain't going to eat just one, I guarantee you. See, and now we're getting back into, oh, here you go. There, you can see the difference in the color. See that? Oh, let me zoom in on that. The difference in the dark meat and the white meat. And you can tell this is how much more tender this is. You know, look yeah. at that. And then look at this. Well, that's part frozen, so. But so there, there are those. This is a garbage pile. And then we got to let that thaw. We'll let that thaw and we're going to cut us off two thick chops here, 
to show you how to make stuffed chops and we're going to leave the other part of it as a roast and in the future I am showing you how to make an awesome pork roast with the richest gravy that you that you mm -hmm. ever ate way better than any packaged gravy or canned gravy and we're going to do it in a pressure cooker now I know not everybody has an old school pressure cooker, but a lot of people have an instant pot yep. and it works just the same. It's still all a pressure cooker. It's just a pressure cooker is only a pressure cooker. It's not a steamer and a slow cooker and everything else. So we're going to show you how to make this in a pressure cooker and it is just phenomenal. And I might even, I might even sneak a little picture of one that I had done not that long ago, um, laying on a plate with mashed potatoes with the gravy filling the hole. You wait till you see the gravy. It's oh, awesome. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're going to show you this piece that we had cut off of here. We're going to show you what we're going to do with this, okay? First of all, I want to address the fact, and um, anybody who deer hunts certainly, certainly knows, um, anything that is white and silvery needs to come out. Now, in deer, that's extremely pungent, and that gives it a nasty flavor. So that's probably the main reason why you cut it out of deer, but it is sinewy. It's, it's, not, it's not good. It's not something that's going to grind up. It's not something you're going to chew up. It's kind of disgusting. Not good to eat. No. Sin sinew is good for some things, yeah. but not to yeah. eat. <laughs> However, we do, want, we do want some good fat, okay? And this right here, this is some pretty good fat right here. This is all just good, clear fat. It's not fat that you would render down into lard. It's not that hard fat, but, but it, is, it is good fat to throw in for sausage or, or what, whatever else, just to... To, to add some fat into some meat. So that's our trash pile. This is our good pile. And we don't know how much fat we're gonna need until we see how much meat we got underneath all this fat. But I don't wanna throw that fat away. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking here at these different sections of where there's meat on here. Since this does come from, your, your loin is where your chops come from. And the bones on your chops are part of the ribs. So there is that silvery stuff in there. And we, I'm, I'm just separating these layers to make sure that I don't have any of that in here because it's a lot easier to cut it up while it's all one than after we cut it into some strips because we're going we're gonna to put this in a grinder and we're going to make something that a lot of people have never had, but they're unbelievably awesome. They are. And this is just all things that you can do with nothing but a pork loin. Now, like I said, the stuff, the pork loins you buy at the store aren't necessarily, don't necessarily have as much meat on them as these because they, they've already utilized it in other ways. However, you can still use the loin for this. I don't like how that piece of fat feels, so I'm throwing them over there. Yeah, what, you see underneath here, you see how that's kind of silvery? What, Gina? What do you, th I'm, I'm just looking here. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get like four meals out of this thing. You're going to, you're going to get at least four meals mm -hmm. out of it. You can get at least four meals out of this. Four meals for, for three pe three, three people. If one of them is a big eater, four meals for four. I've, I've always got, especially, especially if you're doing them as a roast then you're going to throw some mashed potatoes. Well, yeah, and, you're, you're going to definitely and have gravy some and a couple of vegetables in there. Um, if you, if you do Wiener schnitzel, if you're going to do um, pork fritters, you're not going to get as much. Um, but, but like this stuff here, a lot of people would just throw this away. But like I said, we came from a waste, not what not family. We told right. you that a million times already. Some of that might be good. And I'm by far, we're that. not the only people who eat these. They're very popular oh, at the yeah. Ducoin State Fair. They're very popular at the Monroe County Fair. Yes. Um, down here, Monroe County, Illinois, Waterloo. Where were we, Les? That is. Les, we, we just had Pinckneyville at the Fall Thresherman Show. We each had one. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, they did have they did have some there. Okay, so we're gonna just put some of this pork in here, and keep your fingers out of the auger. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes in pork, and it's gonna come out ground pork. And anything nasty that's in here is gonna get caught up. There's a piece in here called a screen. We should have went over those pieces with you. And it's gonna get caught up on there. And it's not gonna come out. 
Okay, so you can see we have a bowl of ground pork now. It's not a whole lot, by all means. If you had um, a grinder on like your KitchenAid mixer, you could grind the first piece that we took off that we said we're gonna put in the smoker. You could have ground that. You could have ground the second piece. You could have ground this. You could have ground what we took the uh, cutlets off of that we're gonna make into pork fritters. You could have ground all of that. Anything that has good fat, dark meat and white meat, and doesn't have anything silvery in it. You could trim up and you could grind. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this plain ground pork and we're gonna patty this out like you do a hamburger. And it's a pork burger and it's really common around here. Um, not necessarily here where, where, where we're from, but if you get further south, like Monroe County, we're in St. Clair County. Hate to admit it, but we're in St. Clair <laughs> County. <laughs> But if you get further south, Monroe County, it's a big thing. Never had a pork burger until I went to the Monroe County Fair, and they're excellent. Or, but, yeah, down by Ducoin, Carbondale, you know, and points yeah. further south. So all we're going to do is we're just going to take a ball of meat. I prefer my pork burgers to be a little bit on the thin side, but I, I prefer my hamburgers thin, too, because, you know, that outside, when you get that good brown crust on the outside. Oh. I'd rather have mm. two thin burgers than one thick burger I'm, any day. I'm telling you right now, if you think a hamburger is something, a pork burger with mustard and pickle is unbelievable. Oh my God, and some raw onion. Yes, So yes. all we're gonna do, I normally buy patty papers, but we're not, I, 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 we're not at my house and I, Honestly, this was an afterthought when I looked at how that loin was, and I thought, we made pork burgers out of that. We're not wasting that. That's right. So we're just going to take a plate. We're going to press it down on it and try to try to get it even. We're going to do like I told my mom one time when we were going to make pork burgers, when we butchered. And I said, okay, mom, let's get our plates and go to town. My mom isn't alive anymore, but my mom was just awesome. <laughs> she was okay, awesome. Okay, mom, let's get our plates and go to town. And she goes, what are we going to town for? <laughs> like, oh my God, mom, we're not really going to town. <laughs> I mean, get busy. <laughs> that was a term in, in, in our life meant let's get going. We're going to go to town. Right. So here you can see we have an awesome pork burger. And this burger is going to get a little bit thicker as it cooks and it's going to shrink up. These are really not good for throwing straight on the grill like this. Uh, that's the only downfall about these is when you make them up, you got to make them up before you're ready to put them on the grill. Pork is more lean and even though we do have fat in here, they tend to stick. So what you want to do is you want to make these up. You want to put them in the freezer and you let them freeze and you throw them on the grill from frozen. And it's one of the best things you've ever eaten in your whole entire life. It beats the heck out of a hamburger. Maybe, you know, we haven't, we haven't, it's awesome. we haven't used, we haven't used the griddle since the sunrise breakfast the video. Griddle. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll oh, griddle we them. we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. You could, you could certainly take this and measure this out in a cup if you wanted to, to make sure they're all the same size. But I've been making burgers for so many years, pork burgers They'll be and hamburgers. Enough. I patty all my own out when we butcher. And I just I just eyeball it. But, yep, just take it, fold it over, smash it down a little bit, set a plate on it, and push. And just try to make it even. Pick it up, look at it. Don't look even. Yep, too thick on that side. Oh, just push it down a little bit more until it's about the thickness that you want it and that's about it and then these you'll take and put these in you don't want to vac lock these in a vacuum sealer until after they're frozen yeah they'll just store because it. what happens is is it just turns them all into a ball of pork with wax paper in between them what you want to do is you want to take them and you want to set them on a cookie sheet where it's nice and flat put them in your freezer let them freeze for probably Depends on what time of year it is um, and where your fridge is. But three three days, four days, you're not going to get freezer burn on them that quick. And then take them out and slide that into a vacuum bag, a bag that you can vacuum seal. And I'm going to look it up. We'll put a link in the description to some awesome bags on, on Amazon that I found that are every bit as good as food saver bags. I actually like them better. I can even put a link to a food sealer that I'm really happy with if it's still available on Amazon. So we'll, we'll yeah, look at there's that a lot up. of things that are not, it's unavailable. That's right, that's right. but um, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and put a link in the description to those things, but the bags are way cheaper than foods. Let, let me say, these pork burgers are so good. They are good. I'll tell you how good they are. I had a half a hog processed. 
I split with my dad. We split a hog. And I had no sausage made. I had all of my <laughs> excess ground into plain ground pork just for that purpose of yeah. making pork burgers because they are unbelievably good. Okay. So we are down to We're our We're down to last, chop making, ain't we? We are down to our last piece of loin, and this one here is... No, it's still she finally frozen. thawed you out? You know what? It's fine. It's, it's all fine. Now, this fat on here, I'm not taking this fat off because we are down to the white meat section of the loin, both ends. Both ends are the white meat section. Can you see that, Gino? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, like if you hold it up there, I'll zoom in close. Can you see that end? Yeah, it's it's definitely good chopped meat. Okay, but it's lean. And when you go to make this, you're going to want some fat. Fat is flavor. Fat keeps things moist. You're going to want a little fat on it. So don't trim this off. Most of this will cook up. And you know what? You can people can trim it on their plate that, that that's not that much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look here and i'm going to say this end well, looks well like, it'll help keep it from drying out when you when you prepare it as, yeah. as, as well i wish i wish we were a little more even and i think that's just because we're still frozen this, that, this loin was frozen solid now <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's what happens when you put it in a deep oh, freezer <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, so true. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cut them like they are, and we'll we'll, we'll deal with the cattywampus end later. All you gotta do is take your knife and cut down through it, and a good sharp knife makes it a lot easier. Okay, there we got one, and however thick you want them. Yeah, that's about like that's pretty close to what they what do they call that an American cut when you buy a pork chop at the butcher. You know, I think like three quarters of an inch. They call it an American cut or something. There's two. I don't like to do them too thick because I, because I don't have a lot of time making supper in it. They cook a little faster. Right now, my pork chops with my bones in them. I like those cut thick because I like to pan fry those. So there's three. I'm gonna do probably. How many of how many of you all remember or had parents that used shake and bake when you were kids? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not big on shake and bake. Oh, every time right. we had pork chops when we were kids. Well, well not, pan fried. Mom not pan every fried. time. Mom not pan every fried time. A lot of pork chops. A lot of them went into the old shake and bake and went in the oven. Yeah. Okay, so we've got five boneless pork chops. Nice. Okay. This is normally how I eat mine. Some people like butterfly chops. I want to save two of these for stuffing, and that gives me probably just about one more to show you. If you want a butterfly chop, some people like a butterfly chop. Some people like to throw them on the grill, whatever. You got him a little crooked. Anyway, to make a butterfly chop, it's super easy. You just cut that chop out of there. And if I would have, if this top were frozen, it'd be a little easier. But I'm just going to show you like this. You're just going to take it basically and cut it in half. And you're not going to cut it quite all the way down. We're just going to follow this around. I'm frozen on the wrong end. <laughs> and oh, look at that! Yeah, perfect. And there's your butterfly chop. So you got it. That's the same thing. It ain't no different. Butterfly chop ain't no different than two of these. You just don't cut all the way through. So I normally don't use butterfly chops. Some people like to actually take this butterfly chop and, and put some stuffing inside of here and then wrap it in some bacon. And that sounds like it would be pretty good, really. It does. <laughs> sounds really go good. I'm going to go ahead and cut through these two. So we've got, what do we have, five? So three, so we've got, we've got five. No, we got six, we got six. Six or seven. We got six. Yeah, we had, I cut four, that's right. Four, so we got, we got six boneless pork chops right there. You can throw them on the grill, you can do them in a pan, you can do them in the oven, you can do them however you want. Now we're down to, stuffed pork chop which is our last one and 
We're a little wonky here because he, she was frozen when I cut it, so you can see it ain't even. But you want to know what? It doesn't matter. It'll still cook. It'll still taste. So we're going to cut this into two. We're going to cut this into two. And after we cut it into two, what we're going to do, and I got to think how I think I'd rather do this. Well, we got that little piece on there. I want to stuff them from the top but uh, I got that fat up there but I'm still gonna do that what you want to do is you want to cut can you see that Gina I this. got so a I, pretty good shot let me zoom in here away, maybe okay I'm gonna go in the center of that meat okay and I'm gonna cut a hole and I'm gonna feel my knife go down and I don't want to go all the way down to the bottom but then I want to twist that chop and I want to follow that around. I don't want to cut through this again. What I'm doing, and I'll show you in a minute, I'm making a pocket in there. I'm making a pocket inside of this pork chop so I can stuff it. I gotta make that hole a little bigger. I'll never get any stuffing in there. So I can stuff this with stuffing. You know that cheap stove top they make these in they make them at my store a lot of butcher shops they make these I'm still frozen a little bit down there anyway what i've done is i've created i've created a pocket in here can you see my fingers moving back and forth in there mm -hmm. i've created a pocket in here and i'm going to take that stuffing and i'm going to fill this up with that stuffing then i'm going to take these and i'm going to lay these down in something similar to what we're cooking our, um, our, what we cooked our stuffed peppers in, any covered dish. And I'm gonna take this fat and I'm gonna put it towards the outside of the pan because the outside always cooks faster than the inside. And we want that fat out there. We want that fat to protect our meat from getting dry. And then I'm gonna take the extra stuffing that's left over out of that box. I'm gonna put it in the bottom. I'm gonna set these on top of it and I'm gonna pour me a can of cream of mushroom soup over the top of it. And then we're going to mm. bake these in an oven, 350 degrees, just until your pork's done. That sounds like maybe next week's video, huh? It might be. It might be. I'll tell you what, they're good. They're good. And my husband does not like stuffing, and I don't get stuffing too often. So I like it when I can make, when I can make something with stuffing because I really enjoy stuffing. And it's really easy. You can feel that. You wouldn't, when you push on this meat, you can feel where that knife is. You can feel that in there. You can, and, and you're not going to cut yourself unless you just go at it like a wild man. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, it's not, it's not that hard, you know. And just make your slip big enough that you can get your stuffing in there. So, and then stick your fingers in there and feel. Feel it, feel if you got it enough. And, and you'll be able to feel where you don't have it far enough. You don't need to pay a butcher to do this. You got a knife. You got a knife. And, and you want to know what? If you cut all the way through it, and you got a boneless chop. It don't matter. Yeah, you got a, you got a big butterfly chop. It's all good. But you know how much how much money you're going to save yourself by doing this yourself so instead of paying them to do it. You could there, stuff these. You could stuff these and then freeze them. Oh yeah, you can stuff them and then and then freeze them and but just make sure that you back lock them or that stuffing will will, will freeze or burn. So you I got a feeling these. you're going to show them how to stuff one real quick. I think we are. I, I, <laughs> I think we are just because we might as well. And then I think that'll about wrap. Okay, so we have some stuffing that I made up. By all means, make it up early so it's not hotter than a Dickens when you try to get it in the chop because your hands won't like you if it is. You can use any kind of stuffing you want. Cornbread stuffing, it doesn't matter. Pork stuffing, chicken stuffing, herb stuffing, whatever you want. Homemade stuffing, it doesn't matter. And we're just gonna Take this stuffing, and I might need to make that hole just a little bit bigger on this one. And we're just gonna push that stuffing in there. Just like you stuff anything else. Get your finger down in there. Now I know I'm going back in this pot with the spoon after I touch this raw pork with it, but the stuffing will be cooked again. It will be cooked in the pot with as pork the chop chops. cooks right yep and 
and with the cream of mushroom soup or cream, you can use cream of chicken. Cream of chicken soup is good too. Cream of gold mushroom, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken. Uh, if you like celery, I guess you could even use cream of celery. Ooh, that sounds good. It's just any anything to just add a little bit of moisture to it and help that meat steam done. But you can see how see how fat we're getting. And this right here, this one chop, this is more than I can eat for supper. This is this is a splitter here. And that's why I always like to have extra stuffing in the bottom of the pan because then that way there's you cut this in half and one person gets one part of the pork chop, you get the other side of the pork chop, you each get a little of the stuffing, and then you just got some more extra stuffing to add to it. But they're they're really good unless you don't like stuffing. If you don't like stuffing. Ooh, stuffings. Don't like stuffing, it's not gonna be good. See, but there we go. There's one. That chicken and stuffing we made at our campfire chat was really, really it good. It was good. It's basically the same thing except for you're putting it inside of a pork shop and, and it helps season the pork. Now I will mm. season these chops before I put them in there. I will season them. I'll put a little bit of uh, garlic and onion on them. I might even take some lard and put it in the pot and brown them a little bit Ooh. first just because it helps to sear that meat. It helps to hold it a little bit of moisture mm -hmm. in. But, yep, this is all you're doing. You're just working on pushing that stuffing to every end of this here pork chop. And one box of stuffing usually stuffs, unless your chops are really big, we usually stuff four pork chops. But like I said, I can't eat. I can't eat a whole stuffed chop. It's, you know, it's a double, it's a double chop. And I only eat one. Especially if we got some asparagus or some buttered carrots or peas, corn, I don't know, wilted lettuce. Oh, man, oh, I love yeah. wilted lettuce. But yeah, so some, that's it. Some, so there you go. Some rice or potatoes. Mm. So there's the last of our pork loin prepped and ready for meals. Wow, guys, we, and we've covered a lot with this and that's pork the, loin here. And that right there. And by all means, you could take this and put it in a baking dish if you were going to do four of them or six of them or eight of them, whatever. You could put them in a baking dish and you could stand them upright just like this. And, and you could bake them like this. And I, w I would recommend covering them so they don't dry out. But you could bake them like this and then towards last, you could turn it on broil. Maybe sprinkle a little cheese over the top or something. You, you know, you can bake these however you want. I prefer to bake them like this just because I usually bake them in something like a Dutch oven. But there we go. So there, that's how you can make multiple meals for 20 to $25. You know, the sides are cheap, especially potatoes or rice or, or noodles, if you like noodles, vegetables when they're in the garden. Just a way to save a little money. All right, so we'll catch you next time and maybe next time we'll be making these here pork chops. <laughs> Y'all take care.